Well, let's get to that uh, Fed decision first. Uh, you know, you said before all of this that the Fed was going to be faced with a pretty challenging communications effort to sell whatever decision it came up with. Now, considering the profound reaction we saw across all asset classes, uh, equities, the bond market, uh, the US dollar as well, uh, did uh, Jay Powell fail that challenge? Well, Paul, I, I think Jay Powell could have had greater clarity. He used three different metrics to try to justify the quarter point cut. He did it on the heels of Williams' comments, which are seen as a gaffe right before the blackout period. And he painted a picture, or attempted to paint a picture, of the last eight or nine months in a sequence. But when you look at the explanations, you come away with a puzzle, and the confusion is introduced into market prices. I think Bloomberg's Mike McKee had a profound question in the Q&A with Powell, when Mike asked about how much of a change in cost of capital does this cut really make, and how do you justify that? Powell himself said to Mike, that's a great question. And while he attempted to answer it, we come away with the results of today where we are not clear about a future path. Kathleen just summed it up very well in her summary of the day's activity. I would say we're back to where we were nine months ago. And when it comes to markets, markets have been pricing a lot more than we now can reasonably expect in monetary easing. Yeah, let's talk about that some more. If we take a look at the world interest rate probability uh, just after this decision, uh, we see that markets are already doing pretty much as you've described, a 61.4% chance of another cut at the next meeting. Are they getting a little ahead of themselves here, perhaps? Well, I don't, I don't know that they are, but, you know, you have an interesting question about a rate cut now. How many new mortgages will get refinanced because of this rate cut? Not very much. What's going to happen to the cost of financing a car? Not very much. How many borrowers are borrowing? If we had bank borrowing that was robust, we wouldn't have excess reserves being parked at the Fed at 2.10. And therein lies another thing. You notice the IOER, the excess reserve rate, was not adjusted lower. So while the range is two to two and a quarter, 2.1 really is a floor. And so I think the Fed has to correct to get to a corridor. At least they stop shrinking the balance sheet because there they were trying to do two things at once and they were opposite each other. So let's focus on the interest rate and the economics. I think behind the scenes there's one other thing. The Boeing adjustment because of this prolonged 737 MAX issue, takes two to three tenths out of GDP growth rates. It affects exports. It has a, a major impact. It's a big deal. And while it wasn't in the second quarter GDP numbers, that may have been in the thinking of some of the people who voted for the cut. 